The topic of this video is solving radical equations. Let's look at a problem. Solve the principal square root of the sum 2x plus 3 minus the principal square root of the sum x plus 5 equals negative 1. All right, so by now we've gotten used to the idea that this is a radical equations problem. Equals radical. But what makes this problem so interesting is that there are actually two radicals. So it's probably worth mentioning that the four steps for this problem are a little more complicated than what we let on in the previous two videos. So the steps we said previously were isolate, raise, solve, check, and that's still true. However, in between the raise step and the solve step, there's a check for a radical. So isolate one of the radicals on one side of the equation. Raise both sides to a power that matches the index of the isolated radical. Then, if you still have a radical in your equation, you must go back and isolate and raise again until there are no radicals. Once all the radicals are gone, then solve the equation and check. Okay, so let's go through the steps for this problem. First, isolate. Now, this is the first time we've had to make a choice because this is the first time that there are two radicals in our equation. We have to choose one of them to isolate. If you pick the first one, and you follow all of the steps correctly, you'll get the correct answer. If you choose the second one and you follow all of the steps correctly, you'll also get the correct answer. But the algebra in both of those solutions will look very, very different, and one of them is going to be easier than the other. So let's make some smart choices right off the bat. The first thing that I would point out to you is both of these radicals right now are not isolated because of the subtraction sign. Remember, if there is adding or subtracting before or after a radical, it is not isolated. So one way we could isolate the first radical would be to take this term, which is being subtracted, add it to both sides of the equation, which would have the effect of moving it to the right side with a term sign change. When a term changes sides, it changes signs. So we would get the following. The principal square root of the sum 2x plus 3 equals negative 1 plus the principal square root of the sum x plus 5. This radical over here on the left is now isolated. All right, so that moves us on to step 2, raise. The index of the isolated radical is 2. It's a square root. So we're going to raise the whole left side to the second power. We're also going to raise the whole right side to the second power. Now, this problem is more challenging than the previous, and if students are going to make a mistake at any point in solving a problem like this, now is the moment when they will make it. So let me point out what I don't want you to do. What I don't want you to do is to raise this radical and this negative one and this radical to the second power. That would not be a valid algebraic method. What I do want you to do is to put the entire left side in parentheses and raise it to the power 2, put the entire right side in parentheses and raise it to the power 2. Okay, so on the left, the square and the square root cancel, leaving us 2x plus 3. But on the right, we have to remember that when a base is raised to an exponent and there's adding or subtracting inside, it is very often the case that we have to use FOIL, and this is one of those times. So we have to raise negative 1 plus the radical times negative 1 plus the radical using FOIL. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Here we go. So negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. Negative 1 times a radical would be written minus 1 radical. Radical times negative 1 would be written minus 1 radical. And then finally, a radical times itself would be written as that radical squared. Now, we have to remember some of our properties of radicals as we move on to the next step of this problem. The first property of radicals comes from combining these two like radicals. So let me just briefly remind you of a skill from intermediate algebra. In intermediate algebra, we learn that 2 root x plus 3 root x is equal to 5 root x. Notice that the thing underneath the radical does not change. These are called like radicals, radicals that have the same index and radicand, which is the thing underneath it. 
So by extension, if we have two radical x plus five plus three radical x plus five, that would give us five radical x plus five. The part under the radical doesn't change. So applying that thinking to this problem, we've got minus one radical minus another one radical, that makes minus two. So we have one minus two radical x plus five. Now, this last piece is very similar to what we did just a moment ago. The square and the square root cancel, leaving us plus x plus five. Okay, we made it through the hard part, but now comes the check, this check. Do we still have a radical in our equation? The answer is yes, we do. So what do we have to do? We have to go all the way back to the beginning and do isolate and raise again. We have to isolate this radical right here. We have to make sure that there is no adding or subtracting before or after that radical. Okay, so let's start getting rid of things that are on the right-hand side outside of this red circle. The first thing that I notice is that we've got a one and a plus five. Those are actually like terms that can be combined. One plus five is six. Then we've got this plus x. Then we've got this minus two square root of x plus five. We want to get rid of the six and the x. So how can we do that? Subtract six on the right, subtract six on the left. Subtract x on the right, subtract x on the left. And when we do, what will we have? All right, well, what we're gonna have is x minus three equals, cancel, cancel, negative two square root of x plus five. Now, I'd like you to notice something because the words matter here. When I pronounced this before, I said subtract two. Now I said negative two. What's the difference? Well, subtract is for when there's something in front of it. Negative is for when there is not. So this is no longer subtraction in front of the radical. Now it's multiplication, which means this radical is isolated and we are ready to move on to our next step, which is to raise both sides to a power that matches the index of the isolated radical, which is two. So we raise the entire left side to the power two, and we raise the entire right side to the power two. And we once again follow the rules that we observed previously. So when a base is raised to an exponent and there's adding or subtracting involved, very likely you're going to have to FOIL. So this is an x minus three times another x minus three. Over here, FOIL will not be involved because there's no adding or subtracting between the two objects. So this is a negative two root x plus five times another negative two root x plus five. All right, let's do our FOIL here. So we get x squared minus three x minus three x plus nine equals and here we have to be careful. So let's once again remind you of a rule from intermediate algebra. In intermediate algebra, when you have two radicals that are being multiplied, such as three root x times five root x, the rule is that the outside stuff can be multiplied and the inside stuff can be multiplied. So the three times the five will be one part of the problem and by combining these with the product rule, we get that this is the square root of x squared. Once again, square and square root cancel, so this just gives me 15 times the thing that was inside, which was x. So now we're going to use the same kind of concept here. These are four things that are all being multiplied. So this will be a negative 2 times a negative 2 times a square root of x plus 5 squared, because there are two of them. Negative two times negative two is four. The square and the square root cancel, leaving me x plus five, which I have to put in parentheses because the whole thing is multiplied by the four, not just the x. All right, combining my like terms on the left, I have x squared minus six x plus nine. And now I'm finally, finally at a point where I no longer have a radical 
and I can move on to solve my equation. I will do so using the same method that I did in the previous videos. So distributing, I get 4x plus 20. I want to get equal 0. So minus 4x on the right, minus 4x on the left, minus 20 on the right, minus 20 on the left. This gives x squared minus 10x minus 11 equals 0. Thankfully, we are once again in a place where we have a very easy factoring problem to complete because the coefficient of the variable squared term is 1. We just need to come up with two numbers that multiply to make negative 11, but add to make negative 10. Those numbers are negative 11, positive 1. So I get x followed by the negative 11, x followed by the positive 1 equals 0. If I wanted to check my factoring, I could do so with FOIL x squared plus 1x minus 11x makes minus 10x minus 11. By the zero product property, x minus 11 equals 0, or x plus 1 equals 0. So I get x equals 11, or x equals negative 1. But remember, this is just what the answer might be. We have to check both of these numbers, because either one or both of them could be extraneous. So we go all the way back to our original problem and very slowly and carefully, one at a time, check both of those values. All right, so this is an 11. That's not the neatest handwriting I've ever used. All right, let's check 11 first. So I'm going to write the original equation that we started with, but everywhere I see an x, I'm going to put an 11. So 2 times 11 plus 3 and 11 plus 5. Okay, so here we go. 2 times 11 is 22. I'm going to pay no attention to the right-hand side. I'm just trying to get a number on the left. 22 plus 3 is 25. 11 plus 5 is 16. Square root of 25 is 5. Square root of 16 is 4. And 5 minus 4 is 1. 1, negative 1. Those are different. Because those are different, that means that this solution, x equals 11, is no good. That is an extraneous solution that does not satisfy the original equation that we started with. All right, so let's check negative 1 and see if that one works. Everywhere we see an x, we're going to put negative 1. So here we'll have a negative 1. Here we'll have a negative 1. Okay, let's do the multiplication first. 2 times negative uh, 1 is negative 2. I can drop these parentheses because they're not actually achieving anything. Negative 2 plus 3 is 1. Negative 1 plus 5 is 4. The square root of 1 is 1. The square root of 4 is 2. 1 minus 2 equals negative 1. Therefore, the left side and the right side match. And this is our only solution to this problem. Okay, so as you can see, this is a very long problem. Uh, getting through a problem like this requires practice, patience, and most of all, knowing all of the skills from your previous math class. So make sure you've practiced.